This is a unique episode. We have Rocky Patel right here in the Gentleman's Club studio and we are going to solve some problems that trouble the mind of an average cigar aficionado. Rocky, welcome to Athens. Thank again. you, thank you. It's always a pleasure to see you. Great to be here, Yasus. I think we should uh, start with the basics, the cigar basics. We need your advice on how to cut, light and uh, smoke a cigar. Absolutely. In order to cut a cigar, there's three ways to cut a cigar. One is with a straight cut, the other is with the punch, and the third way is with a V-cut, which what? is a V-cut angle. Which is your favorite? My favorite is a straight cut. Straight. I prefer a straight cut and I like to just get very, very little of the cap. Just yeah. enough, not too much because if you go too deep, then the cigar will unravel because when the cigar is made, the glue from the roller is right at the very top. And if you cut too much, the cigar wrapper will unravel. So I just like to cut just the very tip so of the cigar. When you roll the cigar and you put the wrapper on, you put the ring as well. Is it there to keep everything together? Does it no, help? no, no, no. So the when the cigar is made, there is no ring. Yeah. Okay, the cigar is made, completely made by hand. They put the cap on the cigar. In Nicaragua, we put triple cap. So there's mm -hmm. a way, it's an artistic way to actually put the cap, then a second cap and a third cap. It's called triple mm -hmm. cap. The cigars then go into the quality control room. From there, they go into the aging room for four to six months. Then they come out of the aging room and then they put the ring on the cigar. Uh -huh. So the cigar ring is only applied right before it goes into the box. Uh, yeah. And it is Just mostly done because it shows the beautiful quality of the cigar. Mm. Uh, the story is that Queen Anne of England used mm -hmm. to wear very expensive white gloves, silk gloves. Yeah. And she loved cigars. So when she was smoking the cigars, the cigar stained her silk gloves. Yeah. And that's why they started putting the band on the cigar. So this mm -hmm. way her gloves would not get stained from the tobacco. Oh, very that's the old story. Very interesting. Do you inhale the smoke? No, you never inhale a cigar. Um, a cigar smoked is to be enjoyed in your mouth. And if you're a true aficionado, they call it retroing the cigar, which means you actually smoke it in the mouth and slowly release some of the smoke ah. through your nose, but you never, ever inhale the cigar. Uh, that was my next question. How does an amateur cigar aficionado uh, pick up <clears throat> notes and flavors from a cigar? You know, many people ask me, how do you understand the walnuts and the chocolate? I just So very, smoke. very much like when you enjoy a good wine, whether it's a red wine or white wine, or if you enjoy a good rum or whiskey, you have notes of caramel, cinnamon, dark chocolate. Okay, it's not necessarily like the dark chocolate, but through your senses, through your mouth, you mm -hmm. pick up these notes. Mostly, most of it comes from the nose. I think that uh, 10 to 15% huh? comes from the mouth, but 75% comes from uh -huh. the nose from retroing the cigar and slowly releasing and you get hints of it okay it's not like quite just dark chocolate dark caramel mm -hmm. you get little notes of flavor the more you smoke the more you appreciate it the more you kind of get mm -hmm. those senses so you have to let your mind go if you close your mind and just are thinking smoke then you're not gonna but if you open your mind up open your horizons open your tape palette and you try different cigars you will see layers of flavor now, the first thing you'll notice is when you have a mild cigar, uh, it will be creamy, it will be smooth, it will be mild. When you have a richer cigar with a dark wrapper, uh, you'll notice more spice, more pepper, more caramel, more dark chocolate, you know, so mm. it depends on the blend. One question I get a lot is like, do you inhale or ex exhale when you do that with the lighter and the cigar? So when you're lighting the cigar, you're always pulling the smoke in your mouth. You never exhale. Uh, it's wrong to exhale when you light a cigar. This whole notion of exhaling when you light a cigar was because some people leave the cigar for two hours in the ashtray yeah. after they smoke it and try to light it again. When you do that, all the residue and the oil and everything sits here in the cigar. When you relight it, it gets sour. It gets yeah. bitter yeah, because yeah. the cigar has been sitting, collecting all this and it's cool. So that's why they exhale it and then light it again. But I don't recommend leaving a cigar for an hour or two and then relighting it. If you're going to start a cigar, 
finish the cigar, sit down enjoy, and enjoy the cigar, it. enjoy it. Don't let it sit for more than 15 minutes. Otherwise, the cigar is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. But if it does go out, how do you relight it? Well, if it goes out, the first thing, the most important thing to do is ash the cigar. And when you ash the cigar, you don't want to tap the cigar with the wrapper because it cracks the wrapper. You want to gently just roll, roll the ash like this. Gently roll the ash off. And then you actually toast the cigar a little bit. And then put the flame away. Mm. And you light the cigar. So make sure the flame is not too close. Otherwise, yeah. it burns the wrapper. It creates. It, if it, you keep it, it away, the flame will automatically come up to the cigar. Mm. You are 25, 30 years in the cigar making industry. 26 years. 26 years. 26 years. You know, I've heard you saying in an interview, you were much younger. We will do it differently. The first thing I want to ask you is, what is priming? The first time I heard that, it was from you. Yes, yeah, so when you actually have a tobacco plant in the farm, most people take the tobacco plant and they break it into three sections. Yeah. The top third of the tobacco plant is the heaviest tobacco, mm -hmm. the thickest tobacco, and the richest and fullest bodied in flavor, mm -hmm. and it's called lijero. Mm -hmm. The middle third of the tobacco plant is medium bodied in texture, medium bodied in flavor, and it's called viso. The bottom third of the tobacco plant is the thinnest tobacco, the mildest tobacco, and it's called seco. So when you're making a blend, you want to use some seco, viso, lijero a combination, mm -hmm. depending on what you want for the cigar. If you want a mild cigar, you're gonna take more of the lighter. Mm -hmm. If you want a heavier cigar, you're going to take more of the Lijero and the Viso, the top of the tobacco plant. The problem with this is the following. Let's say I decide that I want to make a medium to full-bodied cigar, and I'm using Lijeros and Visos, mm -hmm. the top third of the tobacco plant, middle third. If one roller gets leaves from the very, very top of the tobacco plant, classified as Lijero. Now, this is the tobacco plant. Pretend this is the tobacco plant. Mm -hmm. If one roller... The, the, the tobacco comes into and bales into the factory. And let's say I decide I want in the blend the leaf from this part of the tobacco plant. It's called lijero. Mm -hmm. One roller gets that leaf. Another roller gets leaf a little bit lower in the tobacco plant, also classified as lijero. You get inconsistency in the strength and flavor of the cigar because this leaf, even though it's lijero, mm -hmm. is lighter than this leaf over here. Mm. So what we do is I classify the tobacco plant in primings. So as opposed to Lijero, Viso, Seco, I am more specific. This is the first priming, second priming, third priming, fourth priming, fifth priming, sixth priming, seventh priming, eighth priming. Mm. So every time I use a leaf, I say I want the eighth priming from this plant in Esteli, Nicaragua. I want the sixth priming from this plant in Hamastran, Honduras. I want the fifth priming from this part in Dominican. This way, every single tobacco, every single leaf, every single cigar has the same leaf, same plant, same farm, same curing, same fermentation to guarantee consistency from cigar to cigar, box to box. Mm. So and this way, you cannot have one Cigar from this box is a little stronger. One cigar is milder. Every cigar is consistent because the leaf is always the same from the same plant and the same farm. So you know what you are smoking. Where, where, exactly. where, wherever in the world, you pick up a box of uh, Rocky Patel and you know it's, it's the same consistent. Flavor. It's yeah. consistent, which is very hard with the Habanos because their tobacco is from here, there, here, there, where, yeah. <laughs> all over the place, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, the main problem uh, when uh, people talk about Habanos and New World cigars. It's uh, <coughs> the, thef the first thing they mention is, you know, inconsistent. You, I get a box like three out of ten. Correct. Maybe <laughs> they are not yeah. the same cigars. Yeah, you have to be like a lucky like number. One thing, uh, one thing we're very, very particular about is consistency and quality. Mm -hmm. And it starts at the nursery, then the farm, then the curing then the fermentation, then the construction. Mm. 300 different steps. 
touch the tobacco cigar. along the way. And yeah. every step has to be perfectly accurate. And, and not only Habanos, other uh, New World companies. You're the only one with the priming uh, system. Right? Yeah, I use the priming system because this way you cannot make mistakes. Because, mm. you know, if you take just Viso, Lijero, one bale can be different mm. than the other bale. This way, every leaf is exactly the you same. You know what you have. Yeah. Another thing I've uh, learned about you that you love box pressing cigars. How does pressure affect the fermentation of the tobacco? Does it affect the rate of uh, micro fermentation inside the leaf when you press the tobacco together? Or so there's, there's two different things one is fermentation of tobacco, and then there's box pressing. Two mm. completely different ah, things, right? It, it doesn't continue in does the, not continue once uh -huh. the tobacco is aged the fermentation does not continue so fermentation is simply the natural biological decomposition of the tobacco mm -hmm. all the rich fertilizer the tobacco plant absorbed in the farm the nitrogen the boron the potassium the magnesium mm -hmm. you have to bleed that out and the way you do it is through fermentation you simply take the tobacco you add nothing but very clean water to it you put it in a pilon which is a mm -hmm. pile that is about five foot wide, 10 foot long, 2,500 pounds of pressure from the natural weight of the tobacco. Every 10 days you rotate the tobacco top to bottom, bottom to top, inside out, outside in. When the temperature gets to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, you do this over and over and over. Mm. It can go for four years. Mm. So the eighth, seventh, sixth, and fifth priming, four years. Mm -hmm. The fourth, Third priming, three years. And the second and first priming, maybe two years. Mm. So the heavier the tobacco, the, the more longer. fertilizer it's holding, mm. the thicker it is, it needs more fermentation. So that's fermentation. Then that tobacco, after it's finished fermentation, we put it away sometimes for at least two to three years. In the mm. case of our vintage cigars, seven years, 10 years, 12 years, mm -hmm. at any one time, we're carrying about $35 million of aged tobacco in a pilon, in a, sitting in a bale, in temperature and humidity control. So that's fermentation. Box press is an art that was done years ago in Cuba. And you basically take a round cigar, you put it in wooden molds, mm -hmm. and you press it. And you turn it every seven days, any 14 days, till it's perfectly nice and box press. Mm -hmm. And you have to really roll the cigar perfectly because if you box press it too much, you won't have a draw. So the yeah. skill in box pressing is to be able to box press the cigar and have a nice draw. Mm -hmm. And when you box press the cigar, what it does, it takes all the air out through the cigar. Uh, so it's so the food. cigar, when there's less air going through it, burns cooler, like mm -hmm. a carburetor in a car. Less oxygen going through it, it burns cooler, but you get a richer taste. Mm -hmm. So round cigars have more air going through it. So they burn faster, they burn a little hotter. The box press cigar with less air going through it is gonna burn slowly. It's gonna be cooler, but it's gonna give you a richer, smoother taste. Ah, so it's interesting. But, you can take the same blend round and box press and it will taste different, totally different. Uh, yes. Yes. yes, very interesting. Okay, what about ammonia? You know, I've heard, uh, that's why I ask you about aging a cigar. If you leave it like a cigar, you roll it, and you, I've heard it about Habanos, which are fresh tobaccos, Correct. mostly. If you leave it like for two years, five years, ten years, how, uh, it, the, the fermentation, I've heard that it continues when it's rolled, and then ammonia leaves the body of a cigar. Is that correct? So ammonia comes because you don't spend time in fermenting the tobacco. Mm. When the tobacco is holding all the fertilizer, the nitrogen, the boron, the potassium, magnesium, and this is the problem with the Havanos. If you don't spend the two, three, four years in fermenting the tobacco, you only spend six months, or you only spend one year, it's holding all that fertilizer, and when you light the cigar, you get that ammonia taste, mm. that sour taste, because the tobacco is young. It's not fermented properly. Yeah, And that's the problem. And then they say, oh, put the cigars, age it for two years, age it for four years, age it for six years. When you age a cigar that long, it gets rid of the intended flavor the cigar was supposed to have. Mm. So it just makes the cigar like Milder. this. 
So it gets rid of the ammonia and the bad taste, but it also gets rid of the good taste. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. basically killing the cigar. A good cigar made by a good manufacturer is, is ready to smoke when you open the box because the tobacco is already aged, the tobacco is already mm -hmm. fermented, and you don't need to put the cigar away for six months or a year. And you have an intended taste. Now that you've mentioned the uh, aging tobacco, I've heard that uh, you are rolling out an ultra luxury cigar that uh, contains the most uh, aged tobacco from your own farms. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things we're very proud of is making cigars with aged tobacco. We have our vintage series, uh, Rocky Patel Vintage 1990, Rocky Patel Vintage 92. Uh, we have a Cameroon Vintage 2003. Uh, so, minimum, we spent four years in aging our tobacco. In, in any cigar? In any cigar. Yeah. But in our case of our vintage cigars, it's seven years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And now we have a cigar called Conviction that we are launching, releasing in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's an ultra premium, ultra luxury cigar. And we use tobacco from our own farms in Esteli, Nicaragua, where I found tobacco from 2014, mm. filler, or original filler. How did that get away from you? I mean, <laughs> well, it never I mean, got away. So uh, we, it was interesting. I was in Nicaragua about, about a year ago, and we were doing inventory. Mm. And we did inventory, we counted something like 8,653 bales. <laughs> and I was, and the, we are in 12 different buildings, we're building a new factory, we're in 12 different buildings. And I started looking at the labels and I said to uh, Milka, who runs our factory, I see, I see these bales 2014. He goes, yeah, they've been sitting, you know, we've been, it's just tobacco as it comes in, it's used and... And I said, well, let's get these bales and do a special project. And so mm -hmm. the special project was with the filler 2014, some of the oldest San Andres wrapper from Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, we used that. Uh, and then we used some of the oldest binders. And then we had uh, four of the best rollers in the factory only just, making just this for, cigar. Just for, just for conviction. Yeah. And uh, it's a really special cigar. It's a great cigar. The packaging is fantastic. Uh, it, it screams luxury. Uh, it's rich. It's royal. It's it's it's, it's beautiful. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on. Yeah, one yeah, of these. absolutely. I want to ask you another last thing about uh, consistency, but uh, I think it affects the whole industry, the cigar industry. What about climate change? You know, climate is changing, and I think the microclimate of the farms. Of, uh, in Esteli and in uh, Honduras, uh, we're probably affected as well. How do you uh, combat this problem? So, you know, this is a very good question because everybody assumes that every year the cigar is going to be exactly the same. When you open a box, it tastes exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The truth is, just like a winery, climate affects tobacco also. So in the wine industry, Every vintage is different. Some yeah. vintages are better than other vintages. Some vintages you pay more for because mm -hmm. the wine is better. The same principle applies to tobacco. If you get too much rain, the tobacco is milder. Mm -hmm. If you get a lot of sunlight, not enough rain, the tobacco is stronger. So when I'm making the blend, if one year I'm using the eighth priming, mm -hmm. okay, and it's too much sun, the oh, next year I might use the seventh priming. If there's too much rain and I'm using the sixth priming, I may go to the eighth priming. Mm. So like a chef, we are always yeah, playing with the recipe to keep the taste the same. It's not a perfect science, but we use our own palate and judgment mm. to try and keep the blend exactly the same depending on the crop. Do, do you believe we are going to see more uh, vintages like the wine? It's here in cigars as well. Yeah, it's. I mean, people are starting to create different things, but usually with the brand, we try to keep it consistent and mm -hmm. we play around with it. So we don't say this year, this vintage, this year, this vintage, yeah. but it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. My first Rocky Patel cigar was a birthday cigar. It was a Rocky 55. That's correct. I've loved Rocky Patel ever since. It was like a majestic Toro cigar and everyone was like, oh, wow. And I was getting into the cigar world. And I really loved it. It was one of my first non-Cuban cigars that I really loved. This one we're smoking right now is uh, the Grand Reserve. It's a hit in the Greek market. Yes, uh, the Grand Reserve is a cigar that we make um, with the Carojo wrapper. Uh, it's got fillers from Nicaragua and Honduras. 
the cigar is made in Honduras. Uh, it's a nice medium bodied cigar with a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity. Mm -hmm. And this cigar was actually rated the number one cigar uh, in the world from uh, European Cigar Journal. Yeah. So it was ranked the number one cigar. It also got a very, very high rating from Cigar Aficionado. So I would say that uh, we're smoking the Toro in the Grand Reserve, also comes in a Robusto. Uh, this cigar is medium bodied. Uh, it has layers of caramel, coffee, uh, some espresso, uh, some lingering sweetness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice flavored cigar uh, and uh, medium, not too aggressive. Uh, but a lot of flavor and balance. Another Rocky Patel cigar that impressed me was a number six right next to you, the big black uh, Toro. Yeah, uh, I, the number six is also, you know, uh, it's got a nice Carojo wrapper and it's mostly a Honduran Puro. And, uh, you know, it, it's creamy, but it's got flavor. I would say it's mild to medium. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good cigar after a good espresso and a piece of Spanakopita. Uh. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, in, in the daytime, you can smoke it. Uh, it's not too mild. If you want something more mm. flavor than a Connecticut wrapper, uh, something more than mild, then this is mild to medium. Uh, and it comes in four sizes. Uh, the Corona size is one of my favorites. Then it mm. has a Robusto, it has a Toro, and a 6x60. And uh, this is a cigar you can smoke in the morning, after lunch, after dinner. Uh, mild to medium, smooth. But it has a lot of sweetness because the Honduran tobacco from Hamastron Valley is very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. It reminds you of the old Cubans. And yeah. uh, that's how I, I, I think the number six is very similar to that. Another cigar I smoked, it was two nights ago, it was a Cameroon. I think mean, that's 2003. Yes, yeah, so that's an old, old wrapper from 2003 mm -hmm. vintage. Uh, Cameroon wrappers are very thin, very light wrappers, very smooth wrappers. And, and very uh, hard to come by. Very hard to come by, very hard, to, difficult to work with. So it took us a long time to get that wrapper. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that uh, filler is from Nicaragua, uh, Dominican, uh, Honduran, and the one leaf of Brazilian Matafina. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that cigar is very complex, but also... I would say that cigar I would classify as mild to medium with layers of flavor, but a lot of balance and some lingering sweetness. Another cigar that people kept asking me about, it was a B5, B52. B52 is one of the big sellers in Greece. Mm. It's from the edge line. It's a, a very unique taste. For years, we didn't tell anybody what the secret blend was yeah. uh, <laughs> because it's a mix of Honduran, and Panamanian. 50% of the filler is from Panama. Yeah. And uh, and that cigar comes in a Carojo wrapper and it also comes in a Maduro wrapper. Yeah. And uh, that cigar has a completely different flavor than most cigars you'll smoke. And people love the edge. It's one of our top selling cigars. And the B52 is, is like a 60 ring gauge, uh, but it's 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 a, it's in a short Vitola, like five and a half, five. Yeah. And, and so it's and a, it's an interesting smoke, smoke yes. And it's uh, the only cigar that you have a ring at the end, at the Correct. front of the cigar. Correct, and the edge line has the band at the bottom. We have two boxes here with Sangrón. Sangrón Maduro. Cigar. So that was the number two cigar in Cigar Aficionado about mm. four years ago. Uh, one of my favorite cigars. It's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, one of the hardest wrappers to get in the world. Grown in the Connecticut River Valley. Mm. Uh, very dark, oily, chocolatey wrapper with fillers from our farms in Esteli, Condega, in Nicaragua. Uh, this cigar completely uh, is full of dark chocolate, honey, caramel, coffee, espresso. Uh, I would say it's medium plus. Uh, it's very rich. Uh, it's like digging into a big chocolate cake. Yeah. Lots of flavor. Uh, that's one of my favorite cigars. I, I think uh, my appetite uh, grew where, <laughs> where we were talking about this. And I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to use this box as well the next time for the, our next uh, monthly sampler to put some Rocky Baldels inside and give it yes, to Yes, please look club. for the gentleman's uh, tasting Bible. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll start getting a lot more of our Rocky Patel portfolio to try. I mm -hmm. promise you nobody works harder to make a great quality cigar at a good price and you will definitely be guaranteed good quality, consistency and great flavor. And I want to call to action the 
gentlemen that are watching, but if you have any questions about the cigars or inquiries about what you are smoking and how to smoke them, you can always uh, write us at the comment section your question or text us directly at our social media. Rocky Patel will be helping us as well in uh, solving these inquiries. Absolutely. I see the, the market share of the New World cigars is really growing. People were used to smoking Cuban cigars, but now they cannot find them. So they are looking for the best alternative. And I think they, it's, it was a chance for them to try new things and love them. Because many people switch to New World cigars and they don't go back to Cuba anymore. Yeah, you know, and you notice I've been traveling a lot in Europe promoting our cigars because the international market has really grown. The demand for the Rocky Patel cigars and the New World cigars uh, is going up by hundreds of percent every year. Mm. And, you know, there's a lack of Cuban cigars. They have problems with quality, consistency, and uh, people now finally have the opportunity to smoke the New World cigars. And they mm. smoke our cigars and they notice that the construction is perfect. They notice that the quality is great, the tobacco is aged, the tobacco is fermented well. Uh, we have a big diverse portfolio with a lot of different flavor profiles from mild, mild to medium, medium, medium to full. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you smoke one of our cigars, you know that every cigar is gonna be exactly the same. It's gonna be consistent. It's gonna have a good draw. Uh, it's gonna have great flavor. So uh, people are realizing now that the New World cigars are really as good or better than the Cubans they've smoked. And they're finally opening their mind that, wow, there is this other product from the new world uh, that is very, very good. And so this is a perfect opportunity for us to reach out to consumers in Greece uh, and elsewhere uh, to showcase and show the quality of our work and how hard we work to make these great quality consistent cigars. Do, do you see a difference? in the American and the European palate, yeah, the average consumer, you know. I, I think there used to be a big difference, but now it's changing. Uh, I think before, uh, you know, the European market, they were smoking light wrappers. Uh, yeah. They were smoking small ring gauges, smaller cigars, but now I see them smoking darker wrappers, more fuller bodied cigars, box mm. press cigars, a six by 60 or big ring gauge cigars. So, it's changing, yes. In America, still, they, 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 they like the big ring gauges and they like the dark wrappers. But uh, I see now that the European market is more open-minded. Mm -hmm. They're more open to trying new cigars. And I think it's coming together. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's changed from being small, mild cigars to now mm -hmm. really opening up to trying a, other things. A good cigar is a good cigar. Right? And everybody loves it. Yeah, yeah. I want you to give us some recommendations from from your portfolio, what cigar would you recommend to a amateur smoker? So like your I, first cigar, yeah. So I think if you just start smoking cigars and want to experience cigars, mm. you should start with the Rocky Patel Vintage 1999. Uh, it's a Connecticut shade wrapper. It's very creamy. It's very mild. It's very smooth. It's a nice, easy draw. It burns well. So that would be a great starting cigar. After that, I would go to the Vintage 2003. It's a Cameroon wrapper. Mm -hmm. It has a little more flavor. Uh, the fillers are exactly the same as the Vintage 99. The only difference is the wrapper has more flavor, has mm -hmm. more sweetness. It's more interesting. And so that would be the next graduation. After that, I would go to the Vintage 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be truly a medium bodied cigar. And then after that, I would probably uh, suggest uh, you try the number six. Uh, that's also a great mild to medium bodied cigar. It's got layers of flavor and balance. And then when you want something after a nice dinner, uh, something after a big meal, then try the Sun Grown Maduro or the Grand Reserve. Those two cigars are going to be more rich, more decadent, and, uh, you know, be good after a good meal. Mm. Uh, what about cigar pairings? You know, a, a a drink can make or break a cigar experience. You know, I, I've tried the rum with a cigar and I said, not a nice cigar. I changed the rum and it was like spices and full of flavor. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that's a nice cigar now. So I think when you're smoking a mild cigar, like a vintage 99, or if you're smoking a vintage 2003, you want something light. You know, you mm -hmm. don't want something with a lot of alcohol content that Let, overwhelms your Let's do it the opposite yeah. way. How, what uh, cigar would you recommend for coffee? 
for whiskey. You know, let's do it that way. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, a vintage 99 is great with an espresso or coffee. In the morning, it's creamy, it's mild. Uh, I think the number six or the vintage 2003, all great for breakfast cigars. Mm. They're great with coffee, great with espresso, great with a piece of panacopita, something easy in the morning. And uh, bugacha, you, sh you should try bugacha next time. Yeah, bugacha. Panacopita, you know. Yeah, that's what I know, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and what about uh, pairing with a rum or a whiskey? With a rum or a whiskey, I would say go with the Sun Grown Maduro or the Grand Reserve. Okay, so uh, a little more rich, a little more decadent, a lot more flavor. Mm. So uh, definitely with the whiskey, I would go with the Sun Grown Maduro. With the rum or red wine, mm. I would go with the Grand Reserve. Mm. I, I've heard also something about you creating a like uh, something out uh, outside cigars like uh, champagne or a whiskey or a rum is that I'm, I'm working on i'm working on a, a single malt scotch yeah and uh so that's my passion i i love great uh, scotches so i'm working on a single malt mm -hmm. scotch so hopefully next year uh we'll be able to come out with a single malt do, scotch do, a project i've been working on for years do, do you have like a favorite uh, pair like a favorite whiskey or a rum right I, I think you love scotch so what's your favorite scotch right now before you make it it own? depends on my mood i jump around you know so if if i'm if i'm smoking something like really full-bodied and rich then i'll do an eily you know like mm. a lagavulin or something like that uh, if i'm uh, smoking like a grand reserve i'll go with the highland uh, balvini or you know uh, 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 yeah, you know, I, I, my I, I, everyday is Johnny Walker Double Black uh, uh, blended, but uh, but there's so many great. I love some of the great Japanese whiskeys. Mm. They're also very, 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 very good. Uh, so it depends on my mood. I move around with my cigars. I also move around with my whiskeys, and I very much enjoy good Italian wines. So uh, uh, I like the Brunellos, yeah, Brunellos, Barolo, Super Tuscans. I've enjoyed some great Greek wines. Uh, mm. from the uh, Peloponnese area and uh, some other areas in the north. Uh, mm. Some amazing grape varietals. Uh, I can't pronounce them. Uh, Argon uh, the one grape is uh, Argonia uh, Agarito. It's a great grape varietal. Uh, then there's one with an M. It's another one. Yeah. Yeah, those two are my favorite grape varietals. So I've been drinking a lot of Greek wines and mm. um, very, very good. Enjoy them very yeah, much. Did you find the Greek wines in the States? Uh, yeah, you find them at the Greek restaurants, but not typically on most menus. But when I'm here, you know, I, I love the Greek food. Uh, I think the food, the diet is fantastic. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, it's just amazing. And, and, and the and, fish and uh, it's and it, just, pair well, it pairs well with a cigar. Yeah, it <laughs> pairs very well. And uh, uh, thermosalata, you know, every day. I have, thermosalata. I have, uh, yeah, I, I love it. I think it's... Uh, when so I your, your favorite... Uh, what, what about your favorite dish in the restaurant? You know? Well, I like fagri. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, just done right with just olive oil and lemon is perfect, you know, especially on charcoal. Uh, but uh, all the fish is great. Uh, uh, I like the sea bream. That's another mm -hmm. good fish that I enjoy very, very, very much. Teramasalata, spanakopita. Well, spanakopita, <laughs> I get at home all the time. Uh, but, uh, okay. About your first cigar, do you remember your first cigar? I remember the first cigar I ever smoked was on the movie set of a movie that we were working on um, called uh, Double Dragon uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. And it was a... For, for the people that don't, don't know, uh, Rocky was a lawyer, a celebrity law lawyer in the, in the States. Yes. We were representing a lot of Hollywood stars. Back, yes, we were doing a lot day. of movie financing and working with a lot of Hollywood celebrities and working on movies. And so that's why I started smoking cigars because they were all smoking cigars. And then I joined the private cigar club in Beverly Hills called the Grand Havana Room. And people like Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all these people were there. We would smoke cigars. And, you know, I remember doing cigar nights at Arnold Schwarzenegger's restaurant called Shotzi mm. in Santa Monica. First Monday of every month, we would do a cigar dinner at his mm. restaurant and we'd be there. But uh, yeah, my first cigar was in, on a movie set. I think back in 19, uh, I want to say in 1993 or four, something like that. You know, so maybe yeah. two, 1991, 92, something do you, like that. Do you remember the cigar as well? Yes, it was a Macanudo Prince Philippe Rothschild. Uh, and what was your first uh, Rocky Patel cigar? 
Well, the first cigar that uh, the, it went uh, out in the market. You the know, first, the, the first wearing... Rocky Patel cigar was the vintage 1990. Mm. So that was, I think, in 2002. Uh, we made the Rocky Patel vintage 1990 and the vintage 1992. You probably tried a lot of blends and you chose I made 128 one. blends. I remember ah. very clearly I made 128 blends and then we chose one of the blends and I know the blend by heart still. How many cigars do you do you had to smoke per day to reach 120 blends? Probably about now? 11 or 12 a day. Yeah. 11 or 12. And then what happens is you come down to three or four that you like. Yeah. And then you keep changing the binder. You change part of the filler. Mm. You change the priming. And sometimes it gets worse. Sometimes mm. it gets better. And this goes on for three, four months. But then you're smoking the cigar fresh. Then you have to let the cigar, when you get down to the three, mm. then you let the cigar sit for four or five months. And then you smoke it again. And then some are better. And then you keep back and forth to go, okay, this one is better than the other three or four. And that's how you make the decision. And that's when we release a blend. Right. So it's always a two-year process in making a blend before yeah. you release it out to the marketplace. You have to work uh, outside the cigar industry as well and deal you get your foot, your feet in the cigar industry. Yeah, and I mean yourself and the company. Yeah? yeah, so it wasn't easy at first, right? So uh, I make all the blends myself. Even mm. now, I make all the blends myself. Mm. And then, uh, you know, when I come down to the final two or three blends, I will give one to my brother. I'll give one to Adam in our office, who has a good palate. So there's two, three people who I trust, who I know, who have a good palate. And when it comes to the final three. Uh, I will give them the blind cigar and they will all make notes and give it yeah. back to me. But then I'll make the final decision. Sometimes I don't agree with them and I'll go with what I like. Sometimes we agree and we all agree on the same one. Mm. But it's very difficult when you come to the last two. Yeah, it, it's, it's nice. like, no, it takes me three, four months to say which one. Wow, they're both good. Well, you know, which one? It's very difficult. Uh, and I've seen uh, that uh, you had a big win in the States against the FDA. So you, can, so you can bring more new blends to the market easily, more easily. Yeah, so I spent the last seven years fighting in Washington, D.C. Mm. Uh, we were with the government, Congress and Senate uh, lobbying uh, to get rid of the FDA regulation. The FDA regulation uh, would have not allowed us to come out with the new cigars after 2016. Uh, every cigar would have to go through chemical constituent testing. It basically, it was meant for cigarettes. Yeah. And uh, it would have every wiped size, out 80% blend. of the cigarette uh, cigar companies. It would have cost a company like mine $60 million to comply. It was ridiculous. So then we finally went to the court mm. and uh, we won the first case. And the first case was they wanted us to put warning stickers on the boxes. And the judge showed, judge, judge said that uh, the FDA has not shown enough evidence that premium cigars cause a health risk to the public. So there was no warning stickers. Yeah. Then the second case we filed was to get rid of the chemical testing, constituent testing, and to allow us to bring the cigars, new blends to the marketplace. And we won that case. And finally, the third case, the judge ruled in our favor just about 10 days ago mm -hmm. to wipe out all the FDA regulation. And the judge said that the FDA regulation should not apply to premium cigars because it is a unique tobacco product. It is very different than all other tobacco products. There's no children smoking it. There's no health problems from it. People smoke cigars occasionally. It's not a habit and they don't cause cancer or any other problems. So the regulation, the government cannot regulate premium cigars. It was a big win for our industry mm -hmm. and uh, very, very happy about it. And then we also had some other good news. Uh, the Rocky Patel 60 to celebrate my 60th birthday that we mm -hmm. launched. Uh, just got the number two cigar and cigar aficionado. Yeah. Uh, technically, okay. it's number one because there's some Cuban that you can't buy that's ahead of it anyway. <laughs> so we're excited. Uh, that cigar should be coming out to the Greek market sometime next year. Uh, Nato, can we? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, uh, can uh, move in. So this is the 60. This, this is the 60, the Rocky Patel 60. Okay, the last time, the last time I tried the birthday cigar, it was great. 55, cigar. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. This is this is my new favorite now. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, really, really so ex we, exceptional we cigar, and it's aged for two years after it's rolled in Nicaragua mm -hmm. before we release it. So it's a very, very special cigar with a lot of flavor, um, and uh, hopefully you get a chance to try it. 
What plans does Rocky Patel cigar company has for the next years? Do you have a, I heard you are creating a new factory or where? Yes, yeah, so we are building a new factory in uh, Nicaragua. Mm. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, it will take two years to finish that factory. Uh, you know, we're working on special limited projects now. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we have our own farms in Nicaragua and Esteli Condega, we have a new farm in Hamastran in Honduras. Uh, we have the capability to really age tobaccos, create vintage tobaccos. So we're doing small batch releases with vintage special projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, with aged tobacco, so more, more work for you, but you have to. Yes, but it's a passion. <laughs> I love it, so yeah. it's a passion. So uh, we're excited about the sixty. We have another one called the White Label uh, that we're very excited about. Uh, mm -hmm. A mild cigar, like I told you, it's very difficult to make mild cigars that have a lot of flavor but are mm -hmm. smooth and balanced. So we're excited about that. Uh, we have also the Conviction, which is the, the ultra premium there, yeah. luxury cigar coming out. Uh, so there, there is a rise uh, for uh, luxury, ultra luxury cigars. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So there is uh, a demand, a rising demand. Yeah. yeah for and uh, Rocky Patel himself has uh, is generous enough to give us a gift, a very nice porcelain ashtray. It's a beautiful ashtray. It's a white label ashtray. It's very, very elegant, uh, white with uh, rose gold. Uh, stunning, uh, elegant, beautiful. Uh, one think, lucky winner is going to get this gorgeous ashtray. How you can get this ashtray? You can comment underneath the video your favorite Rocky Patel cigar. And then at uh, 30 days after the video is released, we will do a draw and the one lucky winner will get this uh, ashtray. And uh, we're looking forward to sharing more of our cigars with you in the Greek market. So try the Rocky Patel cigars. I promise you, you're going to enjoy them and nobody works harder to deliver a great quality cigar at a fair price. So look forward to seeing and smoking more cigars in the Greek market with all of you. Enjoy. So thank you very much, Rocky, for being here. Thank you for introducing our cigars to uh, the market and thank you for everything you do to promote premium cigars and to promote our beautiful little cottage industry that we work so hard at to make good quality and we appreciate everything that you're doing to the consumer to educate them exactly. and teach them about cigars. Thank you very much. I'm going to give this gift to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Amazing Bible. I appreciate it. So we see you on the next one. Until then, drink like a gentleman and smoke like a boss. Enjoy.